often people think that setting an active link in your nav bar is a simple task to do in any programming language. Setting an active link is quite complex, especially if you don't have any special plugins to do so. In this video, we're going to cover exactly how you can set an active link in your nav bar using Next.js or React. Without further ado, let's jump straight into the video. Okay, so just a quick overview before we get started. So we currently have a Next.js project set up already. And at the very top, we have a header. And it's just a simple header with a nav bar with three links, home, about, and contact. And essentially what we want to do is that when we click on one of these links, we want the actual nav bar link to be highlighted with a blue color and an underline. So if I click on home, then home will be underlined and uh, highlighted with blue. Same thing with about. Same thing with contact. As you can see, I'm flipping between pages, but there's no styling on this. So basically, we're not setting any of these as active. So let me go to the Visual Studio project to show you exactly what the code looks like currently. So what I currently set up is a Next.js project, Next.js 14 to be specific. And in here, we have some Tailwind styling that we're going to apply once we finish writing out all the logic. The thing to pay attention to here is that I've created a special active class, and this is the class that we're going to set on the anchor element. And essentially, this is going to be the styling responsible for giving the highlighted color and the other underline as well. All right, so now I just want to walk through a couple of the pages that we have set up. So we only have these three pages set up, the home page, the about page, and the contact page, as you have seen in the uh, demo. And the other thing I'll point out before we get started is that we have a special header component that I created, and that's being referenced directly in the layout.jsx file uh, within the root layout is itself. So it's a very simple project. So let's get started with some of the header code here. So looking at the header.jsx file, all I have set up here is just some boilerplate code to work with. I haven't set up any logic to handle the active state yet. So what we have here is in this header component, a pages array, and that pages array will contain several different objects, which has properties, basically uh, name and path. So the name is the name of the page, which is getting displayed in the nav bar here. And then the path will be the actual URL path for each and every uh, URL or each and every nav bar link. And down here in the JSX, I have just a simple nav element that outputs each and every link in, in a for loop, essentially. So that's all we have set up. Again, we don't have any special logic here to drive the active state uh, of the navbar link. So we're going to get started with that right now. So the very first thing I want to point out here is that this solution that I'm going to build is going to be using client components in Next.js. This um, actual solution would also work in React. Um, there is a workaround for this using server components in Next.js 13 and 14, but it's a bit complicated. So if you ever run into this scenario, I definitely recommend that you use client components instead of server components. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, let's uh, change this uh, header.jsx file to a client component by just adding the use client directive at the very top. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So, so far you guys will see nothing happen because all we did is just set that client component state. Uh, the second thing we want to do here is basically when the user clicks on a particular nav bar link, we want to be able to grab the current uh, URL path to that link. So we want to be able to detect what the current page is. And then we're going to check to see if the current page is equal to the a specific path that we're going to pass into a function. And if those uh, match, then we want to set the active state. So it sounds rather simple, but let me go ahead and show you exactly how this is done using code. So the first thing is we want to, as I mentioned, uh, detect what the current path is. So to do that, we need to bring in a hook called use path name. So I'm going to say import here, use path name to bring that in, and that's a part of the next slash navigation package, which was introduced in Next.js 13. In prior versions of Next.js, you use the use router hook. So that this would also work, for example, in Next.js 12 using the use router, and then you would just call like router.path name here. 
So let me go ahead and save that. Uh, next up, we want to grab the path name in itself. So within the functional component down here, I'm just going to type here const, and let's call this current path is equal to use path name. So we're basically pulling the current path out of the hook. So now what we need to be able to do here is we need to be able to detect what the active link is. So to do that, below my pages, I'm going to add a new function called isActive. And this function will take in a parameter named path. And this is going to be an arrow function. And within this is just one line of code. All we want to do is say return if the current path is equal to the path I'm passing in. So basically it's going to look for, for instance, if the uh, path is about or slash about. Um, if the current path is slash about, when we loop through this, um, because we're essentially going to be calling this is active function within a for loop down below. And basically once the path that's being passed in matches the current path, then we're going to set the active state using a CSS class. So let's go down below here so you can see exactly how this for loop looks. So on line number 27 here, we have the pages.map, which is essentially like a for loop. So we're using the map function as part of JavaScript. And in this function, we're passing in the page and the index. So the index is being used as the unique key on every single list element. So what we need to be able to do here is we need to be able to detect if the current path is equal to the path that we're passing in within this loop context. So let's come down here and we're going to say class name. And let's just get rid of those double quotes. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call my is active function from above. So is active. And we're going to pass in the path, or rather the page dot path like that. Just path. There's this page dot path. Now, what we need to do is that we need to check that if the page dot path is active, we need to set the active style on this element. Uh, so we're basically going to set the active on this element. And if it is not, we're just going to set an empty string. So let's use a question mark which is sort of like doing an if statement. And basically, if this is true, then we're going to set the active uh, style on this link element. Otherwise, we're just going to set an empty string. So let's give that a, a, a test here and see if this works. Let's go back. And as you can see, it hot reloaded. And we already have the active state on home because we're currently on the home page. So if I click on about, now you'll see that the active state also changes once I click on about and it's now set on the about page. And lastly, if I click on contact, same thing happens. This is working perfectly because uh, contact is now highlighted and underlined. So let's go back to home just to give it one more shot here. And it looks like it's working perfectly. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. That's how you work with the active link setting. Once you bring in that hook in Next.js, it's just a simple detection using the map function below to loop through all of the pages. Um, you probably have like an array of pages either in a database or somewhere in a JSON file. Loop through each and every one of them, grab the, the path from each and every object, and just, just compare that to the current path that you're currently on. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If, if this was helpful, like this video, subscribe for further videos, and see you next time.